Hi guys, it's Mrs. Wolkowski with um, part four of the Kingdom's Overview Notes. And up to now we've been talking about all kinds of microorganisms. First we talked about bacteria and the archaebacteria, and then protists, the algae and protozoans. And today we're going to talk about yet another microorganism, a virus, that's not even classified in a kingdom because it's not considered to be alive. So most of you, I'm sure, have had a vaccination at some point in your life, and you know you get a shot, and then somehow that shot works inside your body to help you fight off viruses. But that's what I want you to um, watch in this first video clip up here, basically. I wanted you to see how that works. It is sort of, um, it's pretty detailed information, so I'm going to summarize it here for you. But feel free to go to the site too and see how it works. This second video clip right here, how viruses spread, this is really a nice basic description of how viruses invade our bodies. So it's really important that you watch at least this one. Um, this one up here might be too complex because it's pretty detailed. But this one down here, make sure you watch this one. Um, and let me talk first of all about what a vaccination is. A vaccination is when you receive through injection, so it would be an injection of a weak or killed version of a virus to stimulate the immune response. And basically to understand what a vaccination is, you have to understand a little bit about your immune system. And your immune system will respond to antigens on anything that comes into its body that it perceives as being foreign. So if it sees an antigen and it, and it interprets that, the antigen on that cell, like if you take one of these up here, see these little red bumps? These could be an antigen. And if it sees that antigen and says, that does not belong in my cell, it shouldn't fit, then it's going to trigger the immune response, the primary immune response. And it, a primary immune response, the first response to the first exposure, takes quite a bit of time, five to seven days, before most people's bodies can recognize a virus and begin to fight it off. And during that time, you don't feel very well. But after you've had a virus once, the secondary immune response is much faster. So vaccinations take advantage of that. What they're doing is they're exposing you to a very weak version of a virus so that the second time you're exposed, it can fight it off very quickly. And you'll hardly feel the effect of the virus at all. So what actually happens in our immune system is we produce antibodies. And I wanna just kinda of show you what an antibody looks like up here. An antibody is always pictured in diagrams as being a little kind of upside down Y-shaped thing. And antibodies produced by our immune system are made to change the shape of this antigen. They will bond with it and prevent this from being recognized. And down here in this video about how viruses work, they describe antigens as being like a key. So if the antigen is like a key that fits in a lock, and the lock is in our cell, you can see that if we change the shape of this key, it's no longer going to fit into that cell. So that's what we're doing down here. We're, we're getting the immune system to produce antibodies to change the shape of the key, which is on the virus, so that the virus can no longer get into our body cells. And that happens, um, virus, let's see, a vaccination, how does it work? It stimulates the primary immune response 
well, I'll say the system, um, and it does two things to make B cells produce antigen, antibodies, sorry, and T cells to destroy it, to destroy the virus. So that's how it fights it off initially. And then, of course, memory cells uh, recognize viruses next time. So the secondary response is much fax faster. Is a vaccine used to treat a bacteria, bacterial, or viral infection? Well, a vaccination is only used for viruses. It's not used for bacteria. Antibiotics are tr used to treat bacteria for the most part, and for the most part, we treat viruses with vaccinations. So. Here is one example of a well-known virus. It's called a bacteriophage. And it looks like a little rocket ship. Oh, I can't remember how to spell bacteriophage. I think this is it. Okay, so it's mainly made up of two different parts. There's what's inside this blue core, and that is the DNA-RNA part. So some form of nucleic acid would be in the middle. And then everything on the outside here is a capsid. And that's just a big fancy word for a protein coat. And that's it. Those are the only two parts viruses have. They're not made of cells. And that's one of the reasons we do not think that they are alive. So down here at the bottom, here is a picture of a virus invading a cell. So this would be a bacterial cell. And this, of course, up here is the virus. And you can see right here, it is attaching to the cell. And do you see how that light, that turquoise, that DNA is going inside the cell? This would be step one or entry. And the next thing that would happen is once it releases its DNA or RNA inside the cell, then we have this foreign DNA inside the cell. Wait a minute, right down here, sorry. So now we have foreign DNA inside the cell. And two things can happen. It can just lie there and be dormant. And down here it says circle the lysogenic part or when the virus is dormant. And that's what's happening over here. It's just staying dormant. Okay? But this DNA or RNA can immediately um, hijack the cell's machinery, start to reproduce more of itself, and it would have to make more DNA, the little blue stuff inside. It would have to make more protein coats to put outside. And we call that replication. So that would be step two replication. And then finally, of course, once lots of viruses are been, have been produced, it's going to kill the bacteria cell, make it rupture and break open so these viruses can get out and infect other cells. And that would be step three, lysis. So that's why you feel badly. You actually have cells that are rupturing and dying. And thankfully, we have a lot of cells. So when a few die, it's not um, critical for us. It doesn't cause us to die. So question number five, can the virus spread without the shell cell's machinery? And the answer is no. Viruses cannot reproduce on their own, so scientists classify them as non-living. So for number five, on your notes, uh, no, they cannot reproduce without the cell and they are non-living. And for number six on your notes, where it says label these structures, make sure you've labeled the two main parts, this blue DNA RNA inside the, the head part of this virus, 
and then the outer structure called the capsid. And down here, did you label entry, replication, and lysis, one, two, and three, and did you circle the lysogenic cycle just like I did? Okay, hopefully you've done all of that. And once you have, we're gonna move on, and we're gonna talk a little bit about why viruses are not considered to be alive. Here's why they're not considered to be living cells. Um, way back at the beginning of the year, we talked about the characteristics of life. We said all living things are made up of a certain kind of structure. The basic unit of structure of life is cells. Viruses are not made of cells, but cells and other life forms, yes. So protists would have this, viruses would not. A second characteristic of all life forms is they have the ability to reproduce or make more of their own species through either sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction. And again, a virus can only do this when it hijacks a cell. It can't do it on its own. So only if it hijacks the cell's machinery, it has to hijack a cell or it can't do that. So cells can reproduce on their own without um, having to interfere with any other kind of organism or structure. The third characteristic, genetic code, all life forms must have some, for of, some form of genetic material, either DNA or RNA. Well, you can see viruses do have a DNA RNA core. So this one applies to them as well as to cells. But do viruses grow and develop? No. Cells do. Viruses don't. Do viruses obtain and use energy through photosynthesis, respiration, or fermentation? Do they carry out any kind of metabolism? Not that we know of. And yes, most cells have a way of getting energy. Response to the environment. Can a, can a virus respond to its environment? Uh, I would say overall, it, it doesn't maintain balance in and out, but it does respond to its environment in some way. So I would say probably this would be, I'm going to say mostly no, maybe about 10% yes. It does have the ability to re react somewhat. Um, cells definitely can do this. And if you'll recall, homeostasis is that internal balance inside the cell with its external environment. Um, and and the ability to keep certain amounts of water in, food in, and wastes out of a cell. And then finally, can this organism, can this entity change over time? Can they evolve? And viruses indeed can evolve. So that would be a yes, and this would be, um, sorry, this would also be a yes for cells. So while they have some of the characteristics of life, and they can reproduce if they hijack a cell, you can clearly see that most of the life characteristics are lacking in a virus. So some common viruses that you may have heard of, the hepatitis is caused by a virus, uh, HIV or AIDS, the HIV is the name of the virus, and the name of the disease is called AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Um, rhinovirus is the name of this virus that causes the common cold. And if you think about some other things that are probably caused by viruses, and again, think about things that you got a vaccination for. Try to see if you can guess and circle which of these down here you can get a vaccination for. So some you can, some you can't. And then um, take your best guess on that. Um, and then come back and check with me when you're done with that. And this concludes our notes on the Kingdom Overview. I hope that um, this helps you understand a little bit about each of the kingdoms. We're going to go on to the chart and finish that next. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.